Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Ruby 2.0, what, uh, what we want to accomplish to in the new future. And uh, I'm Matt, as I introduced. As I'm introduced. And uh, this is my, my tweet. And you can hear us. And uh, if you read Japanese, please follow me. If you don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have released the Ruby 1.9.2 last, last month, oh yeah, two months ago, about a month ago. Uh, then we, we just started the Ruby 2.0 works. Then we just started discussing on it. So and before introducing about the, the explaining about the Ruby 2.0 features, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about history. The first released version of the Ruby is Ruby 0 0.95. So when, when the project was very started, I started with the 0 0.00, 0 0.01, and uh, I increased the, the version numbers daily, so <laughs> about mostly daily. So I released it in the, uh, December 21st, 1995. And uh, as a tradition, the Ruby release is the is tend to be in the the holiday season, like December twenty first. So, year later, I released the Ruby one zero as a Christmas present. You know, the, the Japanese time is the eighteen hours faster than the United States. So, so I released the I released the uh, Ruby one zero, and in my in Japanese. Time so the the Ruby one zero is sleeping in the socks in the, in the, where while in a, you are in the bed. <laughs> so Ruby one point two was released in the ninety ninety eight the Christmas day, and the uh, Ruby one point four is August, and uh, maybe you don't know that, but the, in in the middle of August we have the we, we Japanese have a, some kind of the holiday, small holiday season. It's called Obon, which is the, the you know, rooted from the, some kind of the Buddhism uh, tradition. I don't know, I'm a Christian. Though, but I, I enjoy holidays anyway. And uh, so I released uh, Ruby 1.4 in the, the summer holidays in Japan. And uh, for 1.6, I wanted to release it in the in the in the middle of the summer, but you know the some bugs and troubles uh, bit me, so I failed to release in the in, in the in the middle of the summer. So it was released on the two, September nineteenth, and the uh, Ruby one one eight was released on the the twenty o three the the August fourth, and. Uh, it's a little bit earlier than, but you know, you know that the Ruby 1.8 was seven year old. The half of the history of Ruby is spent in the 1.8 era. And the 1.9, Ruby 1.9 was released the two, uh, about the one and a half years ago. And the, and the, the, the Ruby world is gradually shifting into 1.9. And then we, all, we also have the alternative implementations like JRuby, Rubenius, IronRuby, and the Maglev. You, you don't know Maglev, but uh, Maglev is the, the Ruby. Uh, Ruby interpreter runs on top of the Smalltalk VM, and the visual works Smalltalk VM. So it's quite fast as a, as a very optimized Smalltalk v, on VM. And, uh, and Iron Ruby is the, the Ruby on .NET, which is developed by the Microsoft itself. And the Rubenius is, the, the, is developed by a guy in the engine yard. And it's, it's written in C++, and the, the most of the classes and the methods are written in Ruby itself. Quite meta ish the interpreter. It's quite exper experimental, but it runs Faster than one nine, but a little bit slower than one nine. And JRuby is Ruby on JVM, and uh, 
many of you guys might use the JRuby. Okay. And uh, Ruby 1.9 was a big step. We introduced the Yav, the virtual machine, and the multiple multilingualization. The Yav stands for the yet another Ruby VM. The, it started as the, the side project, the third party project. And uh, it was, there was so, there were so many the Ruby virtual machine projects in the past, but you know, the, it's quite easy to implement the, the very primitive VM, but the, the practical, the implementation of the virtual machine is quite difficult. You know, the first step, the, the, uh, there was the huge gap between the first step to the, the practical implementation. And uh, out of many implementations of the Ruby VM, the, this one, the yet the Yarov was crossed the bridge. So the <laughs> few years back, I allowed to merge the, the, the replace the, the core, core part of the, the interpreter. So the 1.9 has now <coughs> New implement, uh, implementation of the virtual machine, and uh, it runs on the byte codes, and uh, it's quite fast. The, for very small the micro benchmark, it runs 50 times faster than 1.8. And uh, for most of the use, the, the, the in practical use, the 1.9 is two times faster than in the average. So 1.9 is quite fast, and uh, it, it even has a rooms to improve performance in, in the future. Like we don't, we don't use just in time compiler yet or we have the, some optimization left out. And uh, multilingualization is uh, the ability to, to handle the multiple language, multiple encoding, multiple character set in a, in a, in a single program. Like, uh, Many other languages like Java or Python use Unicode as a central the code set. You know, Unicode is very huge character set. So that so if you have any other encoding like a the Latin one or the Japanese encoding or Chinese encoding and the Vietnamese encoding, so you translate into the Unicode, then process inside of the the software, then translate back into the original encoding. So that's the Java way, or Python way, or any, any other language way. But you know, maybe you know that that we have the we Japanese have lot of lot of encodings, and uh, we have been suffered encoding hell for last thirty or forty years. Like uh, we have the the at least three encodings to to describe the Japanese text. Like we have ShiftJS and EUCJP EU or the, the JIS, JIS or ISO 2022JP or something like that. So we have at least three encoding and the Unicode comes in. We, have, we now have four encodings to, to describe the Japanese text. And, uh, the, and uh, you, you may not know that the encoding the conversion is kind of like a, you know, very messy. It's not the, it's not the mathematics. It's a, it's kind of history, and uh, it's kind of, it's, it's so many uh, corners and edges. So the problem is that we have the at least the four teeny variation of the safe chess. So if you don't know the exact variation of the, the shiftjs of the original encoding. So if you translate the, the shiftjs text into Unicode, then translate back into the, the shiftjs. So you might lose the original information. The text will the change, modified, in just the, the translate back and forth from the Unicode. So the, like, a, we we got we got the yen sign problem like uh, the historically somehow the uh, Japanese guy the mistakenly assigned the the, the yen sign the the Japanese currency sign 
into the same code point to the, the backslash. <laughs> so if you write the backslash n, we see the yen sign n. But that's okay. Just, it's just the glyph, glyph problem. But some Japanese users use yen sign as a yen sign. So I, I want to write the, the 200 yen so back in the translating the Unicode. And unfortunately, Unicode has both yen sign and backslash, which, which we ha I, had, I have to translate into. If, you, if I choose to translate yen sign to backslash, so we, we don't have any problem in the backslash n, the, the new line sign. But if I translate back into the, back into the shift shifts, we lose the information. Or if you, if you translate the yen sign as a yen sign, the, you get use the information of the, the box of n, so the yen sign n in Unicode doesn't have any special meaning in the text, so the, the program will crash. So we have, this, this is just only one example. We have a lot of, lot of things in the, the Japanese or Chinese or the Russian text or the, the or Turkish text or the Turkish I has no, no dots. But so in, in Turkish, if you translate the, into the, the, what? <laughs> At the capital I, into the in the lowercase i, you have you have to remove the, the small dots on the i in Turkish text. Anyway, so we have a lot of problem in the encoding translation. So, and uh, I suffered enough for a long time. So I just gave up translation, literally. So, so in Ruby in Ruby one nine the the original text. Encoding the original text remains same without any conversion as, as far as possible. And uh, if, you, if I translate Unicode text, I process it in Unicode. If you tra the processing the, the ShiftJS text, I, I process them in a ShiftJS. So the many people is consider that approach is uh, only a, the unrealistic or ideal text, but I prove it, we, it's possible. So it's a little bit com complex, a little bit complicated, but if you don't try to process many encoding at one time, so it is very easier. Output text, then, then, then process, the don't forget to, to specify the original encoding. So just, just process them as a text. It's easier. And if you want to, if you want to try handling the multiple encoding at, at the s single program, yeah, if you want to do a very complex things, the program would be very complex in naturally. But you can, you can help it. Anyway, so we introduced the, the multilingualization in Ruby 1.9. And these, these two, the new virtual machine and the multilingualization, is the very big step we made in 1.9. So the version number is goes up to 2.0, but the, the changes are rather small, smaller than one that we made, that ones we made in 1.9. So the plans we want to make this is the this, for example. So we try to introduce the keyword arguments in, in Ruby 2.0 and select the name spaces and traits and method combinations. I will explain this one by one. So sometimes the, the sequence of the arguments are confusing. Like one dot step A dot I A can be considered can read as a step by A to B or step to A by B. It's, it's, 
a little bit confusing, especially the ones you get used to the, the language like Objective C or Smalltalk. So we like to make it possible to write like this, one step by two or two, 220. So no, no confusion. And uh, if you're defining the, the method, you can con the specify like this. So you can resolve the, the ambiguity of the, the argument se sequence. So select the namespace. So you don't know that monkey patching. So in Ruby, you can modify the existing class and then replace the method or remove the method. So it's gro global modification and uh, it could have the huge impact on existing program like this. If you replace the <laughs> integer plus, one plus two makes 42. Whatever number you add, you add the, the integers, you get the 42. One plus two makes 42. Three plus three makes 42. And it, it, I'm sure this, this change will crush your program. <laughs> right? But, in a, but if you're working on a team, in a big team, the, some, you, you might have some stupid guy in your team. <laughs> <laughs> And somebody got this to crush your project. I don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> so we, we'd like to uh, the encapsulate the, the modification in certain namespace. This is, the, this is not the, the fixed the spec, but this is just the, the concept. So in the, in the stupid namespace, <laughs> You can, you can modify the integer class to, to make it 42 by adding, addition. But outside of the namespace, so you are safely add the one plus two. So you, you can you know, jail disputed guy in the certain namespace. <laughs> the traits, the Ruby has, the, has no multi, multiple inheritance. It's multiple inheritance is very, very complex, can be com very complex. And the mix-ins is the, the kind of multiple inheritance, but very disappointed way. But, but still problems remain, but the, when including the other modules, so the method name can conflict, but Ruby done warn you about the conflict. It's just resolved the, the the method calling sequence in a, the priority order of the included modules. So we don't have any conflict detection, we don't have any conflict resolution in the mixings in Ruby. So we, we are planning about the traits, which is the kind of the newer way to, to address these problems. Okay, this is the current Ruby module. We have two modules, Fu and Ba, and, the, and the defining a new class, the, including the Fu and Ba. So we have the, the priority order, then the C, then Ba, then Fu, and the object. So the Ruby will look for the method in this, this order. But if, if we have the, the same, the method of the same name in both foon and bar and for different, different operation. So it would, it has the name conflict, but Ruby just the seek the, the method in that order. So the bar has a priority. So if, even if we have to, we want to call the foo, uh, the method in module foo, so we have no way to skip the bar, right? So the, we are going to, to introduce the new method named the mix, which warns you about the, the name conflict. So the, we mixing, not including, mixing two modules, and that if foon and bar has the method of the same name, so 
it just fails. And if you replace the, the mnet M by renaming it, the specific like this, so you can resolve the, the name conflict. Right, and the method combination. The, have you ever tried uh, the alias method chain in the, in the active, active support? It's quite, you know, the re renaming the original method to, to keep, the, keep the original method and then redefine the original method. So then call back the, the areas that, areas method. It's quite, you know, primitive. I don't like that. <laughs> I, I don't want to the, rub the method afterwards. So if you do add the module into the existing class, then it is go back, it is put, put in the, the lower order than the the method defined in that class. But if you put module or the functions in front of the class, you can wrap the existing method. So we are going to introduce the, the prepend, not the include or mix, prepend module. So if you define the prepend, if you, if you add a module using prepend, the, the method defined in the module put comes in front of the, the original method. So if you cr create the, the object of the bar, then call foo, it would go this way, then before, then super calls the, this method, then go back to after, then returns. So the existing order should be before, foo, and after. You know what I mean? So you can wrap the existing method by modules. <laughs> so the, this, this is called method combination. And the, it's, it's the, the, the well-known feature in the Lisp, Lisp community. The Lisp community calls this the method combination. And the, the, the common Lisp object system has a bunch of uh, complicated the, the way of com, 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 uh, method combination, but you know the Lisp, uh, Ruby is much simpler than Lisp in many ways. So I just want to to provide a way to wrap the wrap the, the existing methods by prepending it. So. And at the same time, we are trying to improve the, the implementation. So I we will have the faster, smaller, than soft real time and embeddable in interpreter we are trying to make. So no, no one complains about the faster Ruby, right? <laughs> so some, some complains about the, the Ruby is slow or something like that, but you know, the Twitter was originally written in Ruby. If you can make up the, the website, has a higher traffic than Twitter, and uh, it's a great success of business, so you, you have money, so you are, you are safe to hire the Java programmer to replace it. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So, but no one, no one complains about the faster Ruby, and uh, many people decide implementation language by alias shootout. Silly. It, it's kind of like a micro benchmark, like a calculating Fibonacci or the, the uh, end body pro, pro, um, solving end body problem or the calculating Mandelbrot set or something like that. And it, it's, it doesn't end, it doesn't do anything about the, the web programming or something like that. So it's kind of silly, but people decide language by micro, micro benchmark. So we, we'd like to address the, the, these kind of micro benchmark <laughs> for that purpose only. <laughs> but we will try, since no one complains about faster Ruby. And then the current Ruby was developed in, on the Linux, so that it's 
highly optimized on the Unix system. It's sometimes the, it, it has a problem on the Windows system or even smaller system. But the, some people in the, the small device software development require, uh, requires the, the productivity, which, it, which can be realized by the language like Ruby. Just because you know, the, the software on the, the small devices are getting more and more complex these days. So they, they are very tired of the making very complex software on a very limited resource and a very limited uh, hardware. But, but current, current Ruby interpreter does not address about the, these kinds of the small devices. So we want to, we want to make a, a new implementation of the root of uh, new implementation of the interpreter, so that so that we can address the these kind of the these kind of the small devices. The, and uh, we would like to allow the multiple VM in the process, so that no no global variables and no the we have the VM structure for for each virtual machine, uh, each virtual machines, so that you can assign the the independent virtual machine for the each threads, so that the th Threads, uh, threads in the process can run without interfe interfering. Uh, the in embedding system and uh, we need uh, soft real time, not hard real time. Like uh, the the every process every process can uh, fit what. Every uh, interrupt can handle in the, the 10, milli, uh, 10 microseconds or something like that. This, ha this is hard real time, but soft real time. Like a gaming platform. Like, it's, it's, you can wait for the, I don't know, 100 milliseconds, but you don't want, you don't want to see the, the two, two, two seconds pass in the, the shooting game for garbage collection. collection. You know, the shooting the enemy, it stops for garbage collection. Garbage collecting, then enemy goes away and you, you, <laughs> your bullet goes like this. You don't want that. So, so the, it's kind of like a, the trade off on the throughput and the latency. And the, the, the nowadays te technology trends is lean to, tend to lean to lat latency. So for example, that we have long running running process, so that there is huge memories, so that the tracing the garbage collection has long time to to trace and the sweep the the garbage. So we, for Ruby 2.0, we will continue to work on the YALS, the the canonical Ruby 2.0, and uh, we started the the lightweight Ruby which the Professor Tanaka introduced you, and uh, which we co-named right. Light and right. Yeah, it's quite difficult for us to, to distinguish. <laughs> El no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's a new, the totally new implementation. The right is the Ruby subset for smaller computers. It's embeddable and configurable. So for example, the, we have the you know, embedding system. It, it's the, the, the implementer is one off. The, you can configure the smaller implementation. Yeah, we don't need sled, uh, we don't need I.O. in the refrigerator or something like that. We don't have any file system on refrigerator. Or, so you can remove the, the I.O. totally from, from <coughs> the, the Ruby, inter, Ruby interpreter, right? With Ruby interpreter running on the refrigerator, something like that. So we can, we can uh, the small computers like the games, or digital appliances, or factory automation, or some other application area. And uh, in in games industry, the higher level logic in in, in better language, like uh, the the platform is written in C plus plus, and uh, the higher logic or is written in like Lua. It's a the language from Brazil, and uh, for example, but as a language, Ruby is better. 
I believe. But you know, the current Ruby interpreter is not good for embedding into the, the game or anything. But if you, if you, once we have the, the lightweight Ruby interpreter for, for embeddable systems, so we can replace the lure to Ruby, the game programmer can be happier. I hope. <laughs> and the digital appliances. Uh, many appliances uh, are similar to PC, like a digital TV has uh, the CPU and the memories and the hard drive and, uh, and uh, yeah, some controllers. Like it's, and uh, they are driven by software, mainly. So we have a lot of, lot of lines of code in, uh, in the digital appliances, like the digital TV. And, it, and uh, the software developer for these appliances re also requires productivity. So that we, the, in the somewhat near future, like uh, five years later, so we will have the digital appliance that, that this on the on which software runs in in Ruby or developing Ruby, maybe the, the, this very graphical some kind of uh, it has browsers or some kind of, I don't know a lot of features in, in yeah reasonable price and the cloud like the, in these recent data centers has getting bigger and bigger and the power consumption is very huge. So the, the cl cloud machines uh, tend to be the more le less consuming power, replacing by the, the computers that consumes less power for, you know, the, may, the, the biggest cost for the data center is the, the power. So like, a, the Google planning to replace the, the, the data center computers to, to Atom processor. So for the Atom, this consumes less power. And it, it has less, less, you know, less performance, but you know, it is good enough to run a web server, so it's okay for them to, to have a multiple, the more computers in less power. So in these kind of less, the less powerful computers, this kind of the lightweight Ruby is very uh, suitable since it cons it's supposed to consume less power as a, the software. And uh, the distributed programming is, runs better by this kind of lightweight, lightweight Ruby. It's called like uh, assigning the small virtual machines into the multiple cores, and then they, the, they communicate with the message passing, like actors. So the, it was small, it, the, the implementation with the small footprint and the, the latency priority is better suitable for this kind of environment. So the, Okay, this is the end of the slides. So, so Ruby 2.0 has a software feature, language feature, like I described, to, to maintain, uh, to address the scalability of software or development team and, uh, and uh, the system themselves. And uh, in, for implementations, the, we, will, uh, we will make Ruby better and faster. And, uh, at the same time, we'd like to, to implementation the new implementation, the lightweight Ruby or Write, uh, which is uh, suitable for small devices or maybe cloud systems. So, by providing these kind of technologies, we'd like to help the the world of the the environment of the programmer better and make programmers uh, feeling joy in their daily programming. Thank you.